All right, so back to this yet yeah, another Violet Evergarden video at 9 p.m. at night. My car, the old uh, usual black screen video is there. I just finished episode seven and eight, and holy shit! I mean, damn. I mean, I just, I, I honestly don't know what to say. I mean, obviously, I know what I'm going to talk about in this video. It's in the title, right? Literally, just like PTSD and trauma. That's what this whole video is going to be about because. I mean, yeah, just seeing that, right? Because it's like, I, I think it's something to where watching the other episodes, because we'd get like, obviously we had the scene regarding uh, the Major's death, right? Which I'll also talk about uh, later, right? As now it's effectively confirmed, um, even though that was what we assumed, right? But so we had that scene, right? And we had a couple other scenes of Violet in the, in the war, right? You know, but... Not to, like, the extent of these past two episodes. Again, you kind of forget, because even though she acts like a machine, basically, like, people are saying she acted like a doll, right? Uh, like, again, you know, I guess some people just view that as quirky, right? But it's it's something to where, again, right, like, in, a, in that peaceful, like, peacetime civilian setting, like, after the war, it's like, oh, the war is done, right? Uh, yeah, again, it's... You, you forget, right? You forget where that comes from and stems from, right? And, you know, we, we got a good glimpse and vision of that during these last two uh, episodes, seven and eight. So there's that, right? And then it's it's also something to where it's like, uh, again, right? You know, it's because you only see kind of like the end, right? Like you see her as like a machine or a doll, right? But you don't see how much worse it was, right? And how... Like, again, especially seeing her, like, originally not being able to speak and needing to teach herself how to speak and write. You know, again, it's, like, what you see is only, you know, is a fraction of what was, right? That's a good way to put it. But again, right, and especially in that peacetime civilian setting there. So, it's something, and I even mentioned in, I think, the previous video, you know, everyone's reactions to, you know, her arms, right? You know, when she takes off the gloves, and then... You know, some people are just like, oh, okay, I guess she has, you know, metal arms, right? You know, some people ask and, uh, or I guess some people say like, oh, or you'll be able to like, oh, you don't need to do this, right? And then she's like, oh, no, I'm more than capable, right? If there was only, I think it was only the, um, it was only the one person, right? I believe the, um, the dad who made this story, right? Who was writing the story, uh, whose daughter died, wife and daughter died. I believe he was the only one who asked, like, how it happened. And he would said that, like, when he was drunk. And she's like, oh, I lost them in the war. So, but then, you know, again, and I mentioned that gets, that gets the ball rolling, right? You start to, like, think there. And, but again, it's up the door. He was seemingly the only one who even said that, right? Or, like, I think it's been said other times, but you don't really grasp the full uh, meaning or, like, impact of that. Uh, unless, again, you know, you saw, like, how we saw an episode. I think it was only eight specifically, funny enough. It was, like, the end of episode seven into, like, episode eight. But, again, so there's that, right? Just the full picture and scope and, like, breadth of, okay, what she's been through, right? And what she's done. Because she even said, and I'll get into two, kind of, two portions of this video. I guess the first portion I'll talk about is again, I'll just talk about the major first, because now we actually, she was told, and again, was known, or let known that the major died, right, uh, and it was by, again, what's it called, it was by, not even, you know, the lieutenant, which we now know is lieutenant colonel, which is like, so he is similar rank as of a, a major, right, just the one step above, uh, she was told by the doll, right, who was, or the other, you know, doll who was seemingly, I guess, seemingly with the lieutenant colonel, right, I guess, which just, okay, I guess, uh, th I, that was, like, mentioned, I don't, I'm not sure if they ever really followed through with that, but seemingly, so she told him, right, or told her, Violet, right, that he was dead, or, like, or that he, like, rest in peace or something, I think it was, like, rest in peace, uh, and it was something regarding, and then in reference to the major, and she's like, wait, well, what are you talking about? He's alive, isn't he? And then she, she needed to drop it on him, of all people, right? You know, not the worst person, but it's like, if there was, again, right? And then we know that she initially, well, the first thing she did was she went to Lieutenant Colonel. She's like, don't tell me this is true. Like, why is she telling me this? And she, he's like, I'm afraid it was, and I couldn't bear to tell you, right? Or that he couldn't bring himself to. And then we know what happens next. 
she rejects it, right? And then she even goes to the fucking colonel who found her, who was like, wait, what the fuck? What are you doing here, right? Like, nearly, like, fucking invades, like, a base or something, right? Like, takes out a soldier, like, guard. I guess he's the captain, so, but captain in the navy so he probably fucking transferred departments because captain in navy is equivalent to colonel for army they like have a weird rank thing but again so but he's he kind of again and he was like surprised to see her there and he was not only surprised to see her but surprised to see her crying and i'll i swear i'll segue into the ptsd and trauma portion but he was like again he's like why are you crying you know you're nothing more just a weapon a tool he, he, the major didn't care about you right and obviously we know that she's that she doesn't believe that i mean she doesn't even believe that he's dead which it's also important to note that she literally saw him die with her own eyes like she saw his last moments and last words and him give his life there for her right so not only did she see him die like with her own two eyes but af even after seeing you know everyone else or hearing everyone else tell her that you know she still can't accept it and even the colonel he's like the major's dead He's like, and we know that again, you know, the major was his brother. So that's something to where he's probably not taking it well either. So he's like, how do you have a right to be sad when my living blood relative died? Right. And and he was, he, he was also shocked that, you know, she didn't know, like, it was almost kind of like, you know, it's been however long, right? He's like, you don't know, like you, like you really didn't know almost as if it was like a mockery to him in a sense, but he tells that to her basically, oh, the major's dead. He's dead. Right. Then she goes back to the fucking estate with, like, the maid, right? And then she has to tell him that the major's dead. And that's when she's finally able to see the grave, which is actually the last part of, um, again, the last part of that episode, right? At least non-flashback that we see. So presumably, hopefully at least, Violet, after all this monumental, you know, uh, you know, convincing by others is finally able to accept that the major is passed on, right? Despite, again, seeing it with her own two eyes and with everyone else telling her, hopefully with, again, all that monumental convincing, right? You know, she's finally able to accept that and kind of move on, right? Uh, not move on, but more so accept that, actually be able to accept that he's passed, right? And then again, move on from trying to find him, right? He's, you know, he's like, even though they didn't find the body, right? You know, they, they all know that he's dead. So, and again, it's funny after making quite a few more videos and talking about, you know, accepting the truth, right? And, you know, and in fact, the most, the importance of a more video I made, I talked about, you know, accepting, learning to come to terms with and accepting what's happened. That's being applied here, obviously, you know, completely different scenario but again similar you know what would you call it i guess situation or principle being applied right but again it's something to where and this is where i'm going to segue into the ptsd and trauma portion because besides her again you know violet evergarden right just not being able to accept that the major's gone right because the major was really the one important person in her, in her life really the only important person again because he was the only one who treated her like an actual fucking human being right and again, he even said, I love you. And he like took her in as a daughter, basically, right? You know, even the colonel was saying, and his like boss was saying like, again, oh, just treat her as like a weapon or a tool. He actually treated her like a fucking human being. He's literally the only one. So, you know, and then again, taking her in, raising her like, almost like, like pretty much like a daughter. He was effectively like a daughter to her, right? So again, like in that situation, the only person who really kind of meant anything to her all of a sudden is just out of the picture. And it's like, Again, like that can be something that's hard to accept, right? Again, when I made my original video on why Sonny hung Mari, which again, doesn't make it right, you know, doesn't make it good. Uh, such as if like, let's say, you know, uh, Violet just completely rejects what everyone's saying. Like, she's like, oh, this grave, I don't know why you have this grave here because he's not dead, right? You know, you haven't found the body, so he's clearly still alive, like some shit like that. You know, again, something to where you just can't accept reality. You delude yourself into thinking, you know, something else and something completely different is the case, right? And again, that was the case for Sino Mori. But for here, it could be that where she's just like, Do you, you have this grave here. I don't know why, because he's not dead. Literally like that, you know, despite the monumental convincing that has been done in her seeing him die with his own two eyes, still being unable to accept that. But again, we don't know. But the point being because he was the only person who treated her like a fucking human being and cared about her, 
that's just something that's, again, that had a tremendous amount of impact on her, right? And was hard for her to accept there. And that's something she struggles with, right? Right? I mean, she doesn't even know, you know, basic human. She's, lo- she's literally learning fucking emotions, right? So again, he kind of opened up that pathway, right? He passed on. She needs to continue that journey. Again, that's what his last words were. You know, live and be free. And then like, I love you, right? And then that set her off on her journey. But again, seeing how she's still dealing with that there, right? Again, it's just all the trauma relating to that. Uh, Again, relating to him being the only fucking person who cared about her and then him passing, right? You know, again, right? It's just, it really is something to where, like, I'm interested to see what direction this show is going to take next, right? Now that she's uh, learned that, granted now she's learned that right so that's something where you can really see the trauma there and then also more so for the ptsd side like we saw it was at the end of episode seven where she was trying to go to sleep but she's like i i I can't go to sleep because she realized when she was in again this also goes back to the importance of side characters when she was talking to the dad who was again who lost his daughter and then wife who was writing the story right and finishing i believe her name is like olivia's story right she realized that again and she was saying like because we saw in an earlier episode who i think it was the lieutenant colonel was saying like oh you're burning you're all you're burning up right no you'll be burning inside of you even if you don't know it yet and she's like ah that's a load of bullshit like i'm not burning i don't know what you're talking about and then she realizes as she's trying to go sleep she's like wait i am burning all those people i killed they had fam families they had uh wives they had children right and now they their wives and children need to deal with again their father not coming home along those lines like she's really like let's do a ballpark estimate i'll say she killed around probably a couple or few hundred i think that's a conservative estimate more liberal estimate would probably be upwards of a thousand that's upwards of a thousand families ruined by her and again it's only now that she's actually been going on this journey learning all like basic human emotion and empathy right you know learning kind of what it means to be human and then encountering these side characters right specifically that one who lost his wife and daughter and again she actually cried in that moment that was a big thing because she realized she felt similarly with the major again the major having died and her losing the loved one there right again like just like how the father or the father lost his daughter but also, again, later as she's trying to go to bed, like, we see her, like, metal arm shaking. She's realizing that, oh, God, you know, what have I done to all these people that, you know, I killed during the war? It was the same thing, right? You know, they, their families must have felt the same way. So that's where, again, we see that PTSD kicking. And we see it even in Episode 8 because that's when we see it in depth, right? It, it's, you're literally, like, watching her kill all these fucking soldiers, like, and not even, like, breaking a sweat. And it's literally, like, that's when you get the... You know, that's when you get that glimpse. So that's when you realize that, you know, she's a killer, right? That's the weapon and tool that everyone was talking about. But again, you see just all these people, like, one second they're alive. And then just like that, you know, they're dead, right? You know, just the, the, I guess, what would you call it? The, not frailty, but the vulnerability of human, human, I guess frailty would be a good word. Like, the frailty of human life, how easy it is to take. And again, just the, but the tremendous impact it has as a result, right? You know, collateral there, right? So again, it's almost like glass in a sense, right? So, but that's something to where again, you know, and we, we see that impact her, right? And we we really, as she's again, you know, grown during this time, she's went from again, what people originally saw as like a machine and a doll, right? That's what people called her, right? It's like, oh, you're a machine. Oh, you're a doll, right? You're just this, uh, you know, that's what you're like. They don't, they only see the surface and they, they only see again, you know, that's the progress she's made. <laughs> you know, they don't see, you know, what's it called that? What was the term I used earlier? Uh, that's just uh shoot there. There's a good term I used for it earlier, but they see the, they, again, you only see a progress that's been made, but even as she's still progressing, right. You know, learning pretty much what it means to be human. Uh, she was never really treated as such, only as a weapon or tool. She's realizing finally, you know, the weight. And, you know, I, I don't think it's something she's realized because she just simply didn't know. I mean, like, obviously, we're all human, you know, uh, again, right? Like, uh, what's it called? You know, we all know, like, what, like, kind of chances are every single person 
you know, has had someone, you know, at least they know, pass, right? You know, pass on, die. Like, and then simply thinking about that and then thinking about, oh, you know, this is what they were like when they were around, right? Shit like that. You know, you think, oh, yeah, death has like this sort of, again, you know, it's it's human frailty, right? And then also death, you know, having that weight and like impact, right? You know, again, it's like, I guess glass would be like how I mentioned, right? It's kind of like glass, you know, in a sense there. Uh, but like she didn't, she, and again, that's like kind of part, that's part of what it means being human, you know, recognizing that, right? But she didn't realize that because she was never raised to be human. She was raised to be a weapon and tool. Now she's learning. She's finally realizing. And again, that's what even the lieutenant was worried about. And probably why he didn't tell her. Because, again, when he said, I couldn't bring myself to tell you, I kind of took that to mean, you know, he was a weak man, right? I hate to say it, but because he, he also kind of, again, you know, he lacked. He also kind of, again, his his issue was he, he even had like some self-confidence or like, what would you call it? Like self, uh, like some kind of imposter syndrome going on when he was getting like promoted because his family was like a big financial backer of the like state army or whatever. So they were like keeping him away from the front lines and promoting him uh, in the rear, right? When it was like, he's like, I should be fighting with everyone else, right? So you know, their self-confidence and kind of like self, uh, what's the term, right? You know, esteem issues there. So him just not having himself to bring it to tell her, but then also the fact that, again, he knew that if he did, she would be burning up like she was, right? As she's learning what it means to be human. That's what I'm going to title this video. I'll, I'll title it, not, probably not PTSD and trauma. I, I guess I'll title it PTSD trauma and what it means to be human or learning to be human. Because, again, you know, in the first episode, right, or in the first one of these videos I made, you know, I, I talked about, okay, you know, changing your destiny and reforming your purpose, like, you know, what's it called, you know, like that aspect of you, right? And then also more fundamentally who you are, right? I think now we're getting to that for more fundamental person of who is Violet Evergarden. She's not, we're seeing now that she's not this weapon or tool, right? Through again, the evolution of her character and through specifically again, you know, as I'm, I've been saying, right? Through the evolution of her character and through a kind of journey and progress being made here. But we're learning that she's human. And again, you know, she's learning what it means to be human, right? And that's when now how we're seeing this all boil, like bubble and rise to the surface, right? And come out there. So we're finally getting to that portion, uh, like I mentioned in the first video, of who she really is. And now she's, again, we're seeing that she's human. You know, she's not this weapon or tool, right? Now we're seeing and she's seeing that she's more than that. She's human. And again, it's just this fucking show, man, this... I've got, so I got five more episodes to watch. I'll watch them all tomorrow uh, again, but it really is just like, God damn, this fucking show. This was a good one. This was a good one. You know, and again, I still, I, I made the side, I still like like the, all the side characters we see, right? It's really nice and kind of like a breath of fresh air for like, again, to get like a good story or like a good uh, story out of someone who's not integral to, I guess, uh, the main plot or main storyline, right? And again, it's the perfect opportunity with her job, right? It's like the auto traveling doll or whatever. But again, just, yeah, but, but back to this video again, this just, damn, I mean, because here's the thing, right? Let's, let's, let's compare it to Omori. So Omori, right? You know, in that game, right? Obviously, you know, we, we kind of see, and I'm not going to compare it to the Omari AUs because I'm still making those videos, uh, but Omori, right, we, we kind of see it in the form of, again, you know, rejecting reality and deluding yourself. That's, that's, and again, the whole point and the importance of Omori is, you know, coming to terms and accepting what's happened. You know, you can't just delude yourself and reject reality forever. You know, Sonny did it for four years. Congrats to him, right, on a four-year fucking win streak there. But eventually, you know, again, that's, you, you can't do that forever. That's just not feasible. We see that there, and we're seeing that now with this, where she's, again, you know, all this stuff that has happened, right, as she's learning, again, to be human, right, you know, because, like, here's the thing, like, are the, other, the arguable, like, other side of this is, oh, let's say she just stayed with the grandparents, right, you know, let's say she, or whatever the, um, I, I believe, are they, are, are they the Ever, no, it's the Ever Deans, I actually have no idea, are they actually the Ever Gardens? Or, like, let's say she just stays with the Evergardens there, right? And, you know, she just never goes, 
never leaves, right? Doesn't go with the lieutenant, doesn't get her job as the doll, right? Let's say she does that. You know, eventually, like, okay, you know, like, that's cool and all. But eventually, she's going to learn. Eventually, she's going to learn that the major set. Eventually, she'll go out at some point, right? You know, she'll explore the wider, I guess, if it's not the world, you know, at least the wider town. She'll meet new people there. You know, she'll have interactions there. Eventually... You know, it, it's it's a peacetime, you know, setting, right? Without war, you know, she's going to need to kind of adapt to society. You know, even if, no matter how hard they try to, like, let's say, recruit and isolate her from the world, it's still going to happen eventually. You know, that's that's called inevitability. Things are inevitable, right? And trying to prevent them is only foolish, right? That's the case here. Because, again, I'm not making the argument that this shouldn't be the case, you know, that she shouldn't be uh, experiencing this or that she shouldn't have been, again, you know, been able to experience this or let to experience this, right? Because this is what it means to fucking be human, you know? And again, God, bringing it back to fucking Little Witch Academia too. Part of why I loved Chariot's character from that show so much was because she was genuine, right? It was about how genuine she was. And even though, you know, she arguably wasn't responsible for any of her kind of like her actions that ended up impacting people you know they were pretty much all on either again all on either just luck you know like pure chance or like it was croy right you know but she still feels the weight and then you know the kind of guilt and tr- with that right and then obviously that's just magn- magnified to a whole nother level here with the trauma and ptsd that violet's been through right so again yeah, just in terms of that right and honestly what uh, what I was kind of hoping for was actually because she even recognizes she's like, am I really j-? like as she's trying to go to sleep? I think it was in like episode seven. She's like, am I really just a weapon or a tool right to kill? Right. Like, how can I? She even says, you know, what what was it called? What whatever the colonel when she had her conversation with the colonel. Right. And he's like, oh, how can you write when you've killed all these people? Right. You know, she's like, is that really the case? Like with how many people I've killed? And she, cause she's now realizing like the weight of her actions. I was really hoping we get to see somehow, you know, let's say there was like an enemy survivor, right? Of, uh, you know, let's say whatever battle who managed to escape, but like whose squad was killed by Violet or something. Right. And he sees her again and kind of goes through, relives those experiences, goes through PTSD and trauma on her, on their own. Right. But then Violet kind of, and that's kind of a realization there, you know, of, you know, what she's done and the impact that she's had on our people is obviously she'd come across him and he'd probably be like, you know, is this some fucking like he, it'd be like almost like kind of, again, he'd pretty much be put back in the moment. And that's something to where like, no, this has to be like some sort of joke, right? This can't be the case. If you come to finish me off too, if you come to kill me too, right? And again, it's just, but who knows? We still got five episodes left. Just this fucking show. Damn, it took, because we knew it was going to happen eventually. Pretty much since the first episode, I'm like, okay, you know, eventually he's going to learn the major died, right? You know, and then also, but also I love how they tied it in with, again, making her kind of realizing, you know, what she's done and the weight of her actions, you know, and how like, because I also feel like, like, this is where I'm going to end it by bringing it back to real life, right? So let's bring this to real life, you know, or like relate this to real life. Cause he, here's the thing. I don't have like PTSD or trauma. I don't, I haven't really gone through any event yet. Thankfully, or like very gratefully that would, I feel like induce that, or that would have that tremendous of an impact on me. Obviously I've had bad experience, but none that would kind of classify or quantify that level. I feel like a lot of people who have like PTSD or traumatic experiences, a lot of them, they kind of don't recognize it or they don't really accept it as such. They go, go through such things and then act like it's kind of like normal. Like in its, that in and of itself is almost deluding themselves and rejecting it there, right? As such, as like trauma, like PTSD. People say like, oh, what? That's not normal? Like, like that's genuinely, I feel like a lot of people's reaction to like what would be considered like trauma or PTSD like that. They don't want to accept that, you know, they, they kind of reject or delude themselves, right? They're like, I, I haven't gone through such things. Like, this isn't normal. Like, is this, is this really not normal? Like, and again, it's something to where it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, and then, you know, obviously there are people who have gone through some shit and are seen seeking help, right? You know, regarding it. Cause they realize like, it, it's, it's, it's almost kind of like fucking counseling in a way, right? You know, where you need to accept that 
something's wrong in order to get help, right? I feel like that's a lot of the case here where it's like a lot of people, they don't even, it's because people, people online, okay, to be fair, like online anonymously, people will be saying shit, right? But like people will say shit and be like, oh, that's not, that's not normal. Like is what I went through not normal? And it's like, chances are if, if you have to ask what you went through, if it's normal or not, chances are it's not. And it's probably bigger than you're making out it out to be. But yeah, right. But that's kind of, I guess, how we'd... And we're seeing that with Via, where only now she's realizing what she's experienced, right? It's like, oh, this is... Like, she's real, only realizing kind of everything that she's gone through and done, right? And relating to that there. But with that, I don't really have anything else to say. So, yeah, I'm going to end it here. I'm going to finish watching this series, right? This show, I'll watch the last five uh, episodes and then make another video on this is... Again, this is just, yeah, this fucking show, right? It's been such a good show thus far, and I'm excited to see, you know, how it ends and what direction it takes. But with that, I don't really have anything else to say, so I'm going to end it here. So, yep, that's it for this one. See you in the next one.